Good morning, everybody. How wonderful it is to see you all. I know quite a number of you here in this audience. And I do want to thank uh, Axial Education and Media and Eva for bringing me here. I'll be at another session later today. Um, I bring you greetings from Australia, where I'm originally from, and uh, from the USA, where I'm currently working. I want you to just take a look at the top right-hand corner, CISL, the Centre for International Scholarship in School Libraries. That is the research centre at uh, Rutgers University, where I live and work, uh, looking at how kids engage deeply in the wonderful, compelling, engaging information world that they are and we are part of. And so I want to do a very quick uh, session this morning talking to you about some of the findings from the research that I've been involved in. How do we engage our kids in this complex and diverse and conflicting uh, information and technological environment? Here's your challenge. I'm an identical twin. Yes, there are two of me. And by the end of this 20-minute session, I want you to look at these pictures, look at the evidence that I give you today, look at the two pictures. Here I am here with my identical twin brother uh, just a little while ago. But what you have to do, and I want you to think very critically about this task, in the baby photos at the top of the picture, which one am I? And what that is really saying is, I want you to engage with the evidence. Here we have visual evidence. And I want you to engage deeply with that evidence and construct an argument and come to a conclusion which one in the baby pictures is me. This is about intellectual engagement in the digital environment. I put this up because as an identical twin, one of the core questions that I constantly ask myself as a biological twin, which one came first? Was I the copy or was I the paste? And that, of course, set me up for my career uh, in school libraries and as a school library educator. The first thing I want to say to you is to get over this kind of language. Digital natives, digital immigrants. I know a lot of people talk about Mark Prinsky, who is initiating these kinds of terms. I come from a country, Australia, where the indigenous population was wiped out by immigrants. And so these terms are not just socially, culturally, and historically offensive. In all of the research on the way young people are engaging in the digital world and using technology, to build themselves, to build their future, this is simply incorrect. So the first point, let's get beyond this stereotypical nonsense. And I want to unfold that a little bit more. Our kids are growing up in this wonderfully rich digital world. Look at this cartoon. How do you think uh, my first day at kindergarten went? And the kid says, they didn't even have Wi-Fi. And I love this one in particular. Here are two kids looking at this glass case with a historical document, a book inside. Here we are peering in at the book and the kid says, so you then had to lick your finger and turn the page over and the other child says, disgusting. And so we're beginning to see a body of evidence. When we look at digital young people, what is the research evidence beginning to show? These, first of all, the kids that we are teaching in this digital age are really and truly the most educated group of young people in world history. But we also have to ask the question, are they? They are history's first always connected generation. How many of you got up this morning and went to your computers, your cell phones, your iPads, and you got connected again to the world? You felt disconnected in your eight hours of sleep. We know the young people are steeped in this digital technology. They're multitaskers. They carry the world of information in their pockets. 
This is part of the reality that we have to address as educators. But what is even more interesting is this point here. It's not just their gadgets. It's the way that information technology has become fused into every part of their world. And one of my deep concerns about education is that we so often want our kids in schools to power down their devices. And the critical challenge is, how do we power up the most critical device, which is their, their minds? Did you know that probably around the world, 75% of our young people are already deeply steeped in social media, Facebook, Instagram, the wonderful digital connections that we have. This is not going to go away. And one of the critical challenges is, how do we embrace this? Here's the critical problem. My graduation speech, I want to thank Google, Wikipedia, and whoever the hell invented copy and paste. Thank you. Here we have the fundamental educational issue. How do we engage our kids in this rich, complex, and diverse information world? We have Google, we have Wikipedia, and in and of themselves, they are just fine. We're not ever going to take kids away from Google and Wikipedia, but the critical challenge is, how do we engage them and power up their minds? This was a profound study when it came out. It's a little bit aged now, 2008, but the findings from this study consistently replicate the powerful challenge that we as educators have. I loved getting this badge this morning. It's all about what, it's all about having a good teacher. And the critical challenge in this digital age how do we engage kids? I want you to focus on that word engagement. When this study came out by the British Library, the Google generation, what we see all the way along is this superficial engagement with this information world, skimming the tide of vast information waves, this notion of using simple search strategies, this notion of squirreling behaviour. You know, we're coming into winter, the squirrels are stockpiling stuff. And that's what kids are doing. They're surfing the vast web of information. They're collecting stockpiles of information. The critical challenge is that their engagement with that stockpile is so superficial. And all of the research shows this superficial effort at deep engagement with the diversity of information, engaging deeply to build that deep knowledge and deep understanding for themselves. And when I look at all of this research, I look at the growing body of research with kids engaging or lack of engaging in this digital environment, the critical challenge is one of pedagogy. And it's not a pedagogy of using the tools. It is a pedagogy of using the mind. How do we engage these young minds in a deep and compelling way so that they build deep knowledge and deep understanding for themselves? Look at this as an illustrative point, the thinker. And one of the things that really distresses me as a researcher, as I see this fabulous tide of technology and technology tools, and I see these kids time and time and time again, I see this superficial engagement, the superficial building of deep knowledge and deep understanding. And here is the critical point. We have apps for everything, don't we? On the plane down from Stockholm to Gothenburg yesterday, I was seated next to a young woman who was coming to this fair to talk about her math app. 
And, you know, th these kinds of things really deeply worry me because at the click of a button, we have unfolded before us this wonderful world of information. But the most important app is what? The human mind. And that's the critical challenge. What does it take to fire up the mind in the, in the, the, the stream of information that's coming to us? In all of the research, I want to say to you that the core competencies, I don't know if that's a, a, a word in your Swedish language, but the core capabilities or competencies that are really essential in powering up the minds of young people and teaching them to be quality researchers are these. How do we engage with the different kind of media. Each media comes with a set of structure and a, and a format. How do we engage across the resources, realizing that different media have different capabilities, different purposes, different biases? How do we, here's the, the critical challenge, how do we te teach kids to read deeply? We're skimming the tide of this vast information arena, teaching kids to read deeply. The thinking-based capabilities. How do we teach kids to think? And what I want to say to you, it comes back to my original statement. How do we teach kids to analyse the information? How do we teach kids to look for the textual evidence. How do we get them to construct their own viewpoint? These are not technological skills. They are what? They are thinking skills. So the development of those higher order based thinking skills. How do I develop deep and new knowledge on my own? How do I construct my own perspective. How do I construct my own viewpoint? And so the knowledge-based capabilities, yes, we have absolutely wonderful visual and media-oriented tools that enable children to create the most visually interesting. But does it show deep knowledge? Does it show deep understanding? And what does it take on your part? And what I'm presenting to you are a set of basic capabilities that come through so strongly as a holistic, integrated set of capabilities. How do we help our children manage their learning environment? They're bombarded with information. They're collecting information. They're building huge downloads of information. How do we help them manage the learning tasks to engage with that information? How do we help them in, in collaborative learning environments? They're already engaging in digital environments. And so what I'm presenting to you, in a sense, are the core set of capabilities that I see at a holistic level we as teachers need to be giving attention to. Of course, all of this comes to this fundamental notion of digital citizenship or global citizenship. And it seems to me that as I look at education systems right around the world, this question of our young people living and navigating across geographical boundaries, across cultural boundaries. How do we teach them to, to exist and to be and to thrive and to be nurtured and nourished by this information environment? My answer is simple and yet it is complex. It's about good teaching. It's about teaching some of the the capabilities surrounding digital citizenship, recognising quality information, 
being able to engage with quality information, to know what good information actually looks like. How do we teach them to participate in safe and ethical ways? How do we teach kids to work together across geographical boundaries, across cultural boundaries? Again, this core capability of learning to work together. It's our world is bigger than Sweden or Australia. And kids are going to be engaging in conflicting knowledge. They're going to be engaging in what might be culturally approved knowledge in one country, which is not acceptable to us. How do we teach our kids in the global network to, to be able to respect different knowledge bases, to be able to engage with conflicting information, and to be able to construct their own view. So this, to me, is at the heart of the digital environment. And what I'm saying to you, it's not about teaching kids the tools. It's not about teaching kids to find the stuff. It's about that critical engagement with information, to know how to work intellectually, to know how to work as a social and cultural being to develop their uh, important capabilities. And so what I want to just finish up with you, I know my time is about a minute, at the heart of teaching kids to be good researchers, we have to really focus on the cognitive capabilities. That's engaging the mind. It's about building a culture of deep reading. And sometimes your students will resist because they're so used to surfacing the, the, the rich flow of information, the culture of deep reading, engaging with the text, engaging in a thinking way to find the information that is relevant, that enables me to construct the argument that enables me to integrate the set of ideas across the information universe. How do I put all of this together? How do I build my own deep knowledge and understanding? How do I engage with conflicting information? How do, how do I know that this information is a problem? And so what I want to finish up to you and say that it's so easy to be caught up with all the apps, with all of the technology. And, and it, it kind of really distresses me that, that so much of kids' engagement with this is very descriptive and very superficial. So here's my challenge for you. Construct the cognitive environment. I come from a background in cognitive science. Engage those young minds. Give them the compelling research problems, but focus your attention as educators on how do I enable students to take all of this information, to build my picture of the world, to build the capabilities and the skills that need to be doing it. For you as teachers, as school librarians, your fundamental responsibility is to engage the mind. That's a complex, challenging, and powerful role. And I'm in deep awe of everyone who is in a classroom doing this. Engagement, the cognitive capabilities, is at the heart of this. Go for it. Thank you very much.